Oh, and I'm an extremity specialist and uh, in a subspecialty that's called functional biomechanics, which is a subspecialty of orthopedics dealing with cyclic load bearing conditions of the foot, leg, pelvis, and spine. Uh, I've been doing this for about 47 years, and I'm here to try and help people walk better and to alleviate pain and suffering without the use of surgery and the use of drugs. That is one of my passions. And so I'm here to kind of talk about how we can educate everybody to live a life that's free of pain um, when we walk. And one of the problems that we have in our world is that we're sort of a recipient of the environment around us. Most of the terrain that we walk on is asphalt, cement, and tile. And those kinds of surfaces, flat, zero-plane surfaces that are very hard, create a lot of joint trauma uh, to the foot and how the foot transmits load up the extremity into the knee, to the hip, to the pelvis and the spine, all the way into the jaw, actually. And so I'm here to try and shed some of my secrets that I've learned over 47 years of treating patients that I think will be very beneficial. Another problem that we have has to do with the adaptation of muscle groups in the extremity that adapt to how we live our lifestyles. For example, those of us, especially men, that sit uh, tend to have a condition called hamstring equinus, where the hamstring muscles are tight. And these muscles, when they get tight, alter the distribution of load in the extremity, increase a motion condition called pronation, which is an issue where the joints of the foot don't properly support weight, and the uh, locking mechanism of the joints of the foot fail to work. And as a result, the foot collapses, and that collapsing of the foot, an effective effect of that collapsing on the foot in dealing with the rotation of the limb uh, causes abnormal problems in other joints. For example, a lot of patients will have uh, knee pain as a result of abnormal limb rotation, and that's coming from the foot not properly supporting load while we're walking. So one of the things that I try to do is to try to understand where these muscle groups are in their uh, action and whether they're abnormally firing either too soon or the muscle group is too tight. Uh, and all that causes an abnormal displacement of mass, of weight, of motion, of velocity uh, into the limb and over time, the limb can't take it, and so we end up having conditions such as uh, chondromalacia or inflammation of the cartilage, or we have degenerative osteoarthritis where the joint starts to tear down. And these conditions many times are reversible if we can change how the limb is loading weight. And we do that through a device called a bioengineered orthotic. And bioengineered orthotics are custom made from a variety of different methods. Historically, they were made from plaster casting uh, and foam boxes, and now they're made with sophisticated 3D imaging systems. And I built such a system uh, called 3DO, which stands for three-dimensional orthodynamics. And what it does is it analyzes how the foot is interacting with the ground in a three-dimensional environment and how the foot and limb is transmitting that load up the limb. And then we look at those computer studies and we do a static, which is a non-movement study, and then we do a dynamic movement study. And we use those studies in order to properly identify where there are problems in how the foot and limb is loading weight. There are a variety of conditions that affect load-bearing mechanics of the body. Weight, tight muscle groups, abnormal bone structure, abnormal limb positioning, uh, abnormal foot motion. Uh, all of these conditions can either be singularly 
involved or can be a combination of problems that can lead to chronic pain or acute pain. And all we need to do is to break this down. In my world, we use computers to analyze this. And so we have the patient stand on a 3D imaging uh, system. We grab a static view because the foot works differently in static than it does when it's in motion. When you've got motion going on, you've got mass, you've got uh, movement, uh, you've got this uh, a complex uh, array of uh, balance points that are being affected. And we want to look at all that stuff because it all plays a role in how the body's going to transmit this load and how it leads to pain. So this is going to be sort of an introduction video on how we're going to start opening up this complexity and make it simple. Once we identify the problems involved in the condition, then we set up a treatment plan that will analyze how we can reverse those processes by mechanical intervention. I've always said one thing for many years, a mechanical problem requires a mechanical solution. So when you have pain somewhere in the limb or body, generally you have three modes of treatment. One is drugs, which is treating the symptom. The other is rehabilitation, which is using physical therapy in order to make the area feel better, which treats the symptom. And then we have surgery, which is designed to alter uh, the causes of mechanical load, but remember that's treating the symptom as well. There's a fourth and new process that's called biomechanical intervention. Biomechanical intervention is what I've been talking about. It is analyzing the load-bearing mechanics of the body using the physics of 3D imaging systems to give us an idea where things are going awry and what we need to do in order to restabilize the forces and motion necessary to restore normal function. If we restore normal function, what ends up happening is the pain goes away on its own and there's no need for drugs, there's no need for rehab, and many times surgery doesn't need to be done. And that's my goal, is to treat the cause of the condition and give you a solution that is more productive than what's being offered, which is symptomatic treatment. Another situation has to do with our work environment. What, do go, what goes on in our work environment can affect pain syndromes in the limb. For example, if you're a plumber, you're going to be subject to different kinds of motions as you're doing your job. Same thing with electricians, same thing with somebody in shipping and manufacturing. And these conditions will lead to all kinds of unique syndromes that will affect how the limb works because of the activity that's being done for the job. Same thing for people that sit more than others. Uh, all of these affect transmission of load in the body. The discussion today on video is more of an overview, but I will be going into specific conditions related to specific problems in a series that I will be putting up on the internet.